Today, I'm going to talk about Christian stuff and why Christians could be better people and why they aren't better people. If that's boring to you, please, I'm giving you a very friendly warning, a boredom warning. Uh, skip over this. I'm that type of podcaster. If, if I get into a niche topic, I'm, I'm going to give you a fair warning. There are probably lots of other stuff you might be interested in. I'm going to explain this so that it would sound interesting to Christians and to non-Christians. And I'm just explaining my thoughts. This is a, a fair critique that's meant to be accurate and useful to Christians who really want to be better no matter what. Um, why do Christians act the way that they do? A Christian is someone who's accepted the premise that we are under God. There is a God above us. Not everybody's accepted that idea. Some people think you find that idea unacceptable. A Christian is someone who somehow has come to accept that. It's kind of a surrender thing. Oh, there is a God above me. I've got to accept this. That's where they've, they've, they've come to that. And another thing a Christian has done is a Christian has had this aha moment. You mean that's who Jesus is? Oh, well, I thought it was something or maybe I didn't. I, I didn't know Jesus was like that. Really? And they've, thirdly, they've come to accept, say, you know, I need that Jesus. I didn't know it was like him before. I thought he was someone else, but I've got to stop trying to do everything on my own. I need him so that I can be a better person. And, and so that's kind of what a Christian has come to. Now, there's a lot more that could be said, and it could take 10,000 years, and you still wouldn't be able to hear it all. So I'm going to let people talk more about that somewhere else. But that's kind of basically what a Christian's come to. They, they see the God need. They, they've accepted there's a need for the God, and they think Jesus is that God, and, and it's come after. They've kind of had this aha realization that, that they had it all wrong about who Jesus was. He's really like this, and that, yeah, they do need that after all, and got to stop doing stuff my way all the time. Okay, when someone's come to that, they need to be around other Christians somewhere. Not all other Christians. They don't need to copy and be exactly like other people all the time. But there needs to be other Christians that they're around. I mean, if you want to speak English, you've got to be around other people who speak English. If you want to learn to speak Japanese, you've got to be around people that speak Japanese, or you're just not going to have it. And if you want to have the... I, I, the thing about it, you know, I want Jesus and I want to be a better person. You got to be around other people that are thinking the same way. You know, negative people make positive people sick. You know, Roger Ailes always said. So, you know, you've got to, if Jesus is your way of being positive, you need to be around people who are going to show you how Jesus is going to help you be positive. Okay. Um, when we, when we go down that road, We've got to be around other Christians. Anyone can say that. Anyone should know that. I don't think there are any Christians that really think that they shouldn't ever talk to any Christians ever. But it seems that there's a lot of Christians on Sunday morning who think that there are a lot of Christians who don't want to talk to any Christians at all anywhere. Uh, it's really funny. I mean, who would say? I'm a Christian. I don't want to talk to any other Christians. Who would say that? But on Sunday morning, there's a lot of these Christians. They seem to think, oh, there's so many Christians. They don't want to talk to any other Christians. Where are they? Where are the people that say, I'm Christian. I don't want to talk to any other Christians. Where are these people? The Sunday morning crowd is so worried about them. Where are they? See, yeah, we need, if if you want to be a good if you want to be a happy, successful Christian, you need to be around other Christians who want to be happy, successful Christians. Yeah, that's true. But there's this thing where people add stuff to that and they exploit that and, and, and they lead that down a path where you, 
if where you come to this weird conclusion that if you want to be a Christian, that means that you have to have someone that that maybe went to seminary or studied Bible somewhere, and that person is approved by a board of elders or something, and they probably have a building or a location. And even if that person is wrong and mean and abusive, you've got to be obeying even the wrong instructions from someone like that. And that's the only way to be around other Christians. And that's where I have a big problem. Yeah, we need, if a Christian wants to be a successful Christian, they need to be around other Christians who want to be successful. Who would argue with that? No one would. But that doesn't mean that we can take a leader, say a pastor or a volunteer, a Sunday morning volunteer. You can't have a leader who's going to go be mean to people, going to make them feel bad, going to tell you to go get other people to come here and listen to them while they make even more people feel bad. And that if you don't subject yourself to this kind of emotional abuse and waste of your time, that you don't love Jesus. That's the conclusion that a lot of Christians get to. They arrive at that conclusion using the argument, well, you've got to be around other Christians. Yeah, I want to be around other Christians that want to love Jesus and be successful Christians. I don't want to be around a bunch of people that are really mean and bad, whether they're really Christians in their hearts or not, who clearly don't want to be really successful, awesome Christians, who just want to play their power games while, while they're, they're kind of sort of semi-average, not really all that serious about their Christian goals. I don't want to be around those people. So we've got, there's been too much of this. And it's that thinking that makes so many Christians mean and so many Christians intolerable. And it's that type of thinking that makes so many Christians insufferable. And we don't want to, oh, those Christians. Are, no, 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 no. It's not all Christians. It's the Christians that are in this thinking that being Christian means you've got to be around other Christians, which it does, and that therefore we've got to subject ourselves to emotional abuse so that we emotionally abuse others. Whoa, that's wrong, but that's where it goes with too many people, and that's the real problem with the Christian dealio. And I'm calling, I'm calling out the emperor. He's marching through the streets naked. This isn't good. We can't have a system, we can't have a line of thinking where a guy's a pastor or a, a woman, or what, you know, you've got a pastor who, 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 who emotionally beats people, who takes their money, who injures them and lies about them, who gets more power and gets, gets the pay raise because he lied about other people. And then we all see that he lied about other people and we say, oh, well, he's the pastor. He's got to keep his job. We forgive him and he doesn't make it right. And he continues leading. And we say that we have to obey people like this, even when they lead us away from Jesus. And if we don't go along with it, then we don't love Jesus. You can't do that. But that's what too many people arrive at. It, it, that's, how it, that's how it ends up happening with too many people who say you need to be around other Christians. Okay. All right. What we need is a system in place where we recognize counterfeits. We can say, yeah, you need to be around other Christians, but we have to make room to recognize that there's going to be fakes. There's going to be fake people. And no, no, sorry, they're fake. You don't have to, you don't have to put up with that. That's if you don't want, you need to try to find other Christians to be around to really be serious. But if you're around people that are clearly, obviously fake, or, or maybe they're so immature that it's just a train wreck and it's your time's better spent somewhere else. If that's going on, no, you don't have to subject yourself to that. We need to make room for that. People who are counterfeits or at least act like it. And second thing we need to, we need to make room for, Christians believe in this thing called spreading the gospel. 
that, that we want to tell other people the message about Jesus. And right now, Christians everywhere in the world agree, except maybe a few weird fringes maybe, but pretty much everyone agrees that that's not finished yet. The job isn't finished yet. We're not done telling the world about Jesus. That, that's the assumption. So if we're not done telling the world about Jesus, then how can we assume that there's always going to be mature, good, worthy Christians to go do the regular weekly passive, I'll go to them and receive from them like I use an Apple computer and just receive, receive, receive from, and there's always going to be one everywhere I go. How can you assume that if you don't, if you also believe that the message of telling people about Jesus isn't done yet? If we believe that there's places in the world that don't really have Jesus, then we can't assume that there's always going to be a place that has Jesus for us to attend, attend, quote unquote. So we, we have to make room for the people that are counterfeits or at least act like counterfeits are so immature and in such train wrecks that we know you don't have to subject yourself to them. And we've also got to make room for the fact that there are places that really don't understand Jesus, either not fully or not at all. And there's not always a place to passively just go and attend every week and stuff. But they don't make room for that. They just assume that's, that's one of the biggest contradictions. The, the Great Commission, telling the world about Jesus, it's not done yet. Uh, wherever you are in the world, are you attending with Christians? Which one's it going to be, man? You know, and one of the biggest lies is that everyone in America has heard about Jesus. Now, I'm not trying to say we need to go harass people, but we can't assume that there's always going to be great Christians to passively you know, just sit with every week and we're automatically going to magically become better by just showing up. So you got to show up because showing up is the magic or showing up is necessary. You fail if you don't show up. You can't assume that everywhere in America because it's not true. Every city in America doesn't have an awesome group of serious Christians. But these people assume that they do so they think I have to find some group of Christians and go there and kind of obey them sort of and, and, and dumb down my awesomeness so that they don't, they aren't bothered by it and, and, and not be so serious about my goals that it makes them feel threatened. And I've got to kind of become sort of average and not so serious about being an awesome person in order to get along with them. Because I, I have to be with other Christians no matter where I am in America. That. That's what makes Christians so mean and insufferable too many times. No, every place in America does not have an awesome group of Christians you can be passive with. And sometimes if you're going to be an awesome Christian, you have to be alone in your city. Sometimes it's going to happen. And the reason for that, because when the pilgrims came over on the Mayflower, there, there was a group of Christians, they called them saints. We're talking 400 years ago. They called them saints. The other group, they called them strangers. They weren't Christian. They were skilled workers. And the Christians really didn't know what to do. They only loved Jesus and knew how to write and maybe cook at home and a couple things. Like, like, but there were the skilled laborers, the blue collar guys who kept everything going. They weren't Christians. The pilgrims were half Christian. America is not a Christian nation. It's a half Christian nation. The big thing that made America, America is the literacy. Everyone could read and write because uh, they wanted their kids to read and write the Bible. So they taught them at home and homeschooling created the first fully literary society in world history. The pilgrims created the first countries, first civilization, the whole world where everyone could read and write. And they did it by homeschooling because the institutional stuff wasn't cutting it. So... You know, but then what we do, we went right back to the institutional stuff where you got to have a pastor telling you what it means every week instead of learning how to study and understand and read it for yourself and know what it means. So, I, you know, maybe we need Christian church homeschooling. Maybe, maybe learning about Jesus needs to be done at homeschooling instead of the Sunday morning school. Instead of Sunday school, we need homeschool with Christians. So, you know, um, I, th I think I've made a pretty good case here for some, some ideas. And I want you to know that I'm probably, I, I plan to be talking about this more in the future and I plan to not be backing down on this. Um, 
if someone's going to say that they're Christian, they need to be nice to people, one, and they need to be willing to talk to all Christians. So many Sunday morning Christians, you have to have a fellowship. Okay, uh, you're Pentecostal, those are the Baptists. Do you talk to the Baptists? Well, they're, they're kind of wrong about some things. Okay, so don't give me this malarkey about how Christians have to talk to each other when you're not willing to talk to the Christians in the other group. The need for Christian fellowship doesn't mean you've got to subject yourself to mediocrity and become this boring person who's just mean and insufferable. The need to have other Christian friends means that Christians need to be willing to talk to all other Christians. No matter what part of Christianity other Christians are from, they've got to talk with them and be happy about it and, and, and enjoy other people, no matter, no matter what group they come from. That's what the need to talk about our Christians leads us to. But, but they're not applying it that way. Their thinking's messed up. And that's what's so hard about it. And I'm not going to be quiet about it anymore. I'm going to say a lot more about it than I already have. People say, well, you've been talking about this already. I'm talking more about it. And I'm going to keep talking about it. Like Trump tweets and makes everybody mad, I'm going to talk about this. And I'm going to make a lot of establishment churchianity stuff people mad. The, 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 the old school, the old hat Christian crowd is going to complain about me the way a lot of people complain about Trump and Twitter. I'm not, I'm not assuming Trump and Twitter is good or bad. I'm just saying that a lot of people get in a fuss about Trump and Twitter, and I'm going to start doing the same thing with church and this, and I'm only going to do it more. I'm only going to do it more. I'm not going to be backing down on it. And this is the first of this kind of stuff. <sighs> you know, I'm going to make this Taiwan special episode run a little bit long today. I'm already well over. Why is this in the Taiwan special, huh? Because I really began to see how bad this was being over in Taiwan. Um, there are some really, really unacceptable bad habits of thinking. And those habits are, are here and alive and well in Asia where the, the, the so-called Christians just don't get what the Jesus thing is all about. I told you in the beginning of this why people follow Jesus. And, you know, one of the reasons is so you, you, know, you want to be a nice person and be able to get along with people and not just have to be mad at people and make enemies and not get anything done in your life because you're just so busy being mad at everybody. That's part of the Christian thing. And there's so many people in Asia who, it, it's like they don't have, they, they reject all of the stuff that makes Jesus Jesus, except for his name and that he died on the cross and that's it. But when it comes to becoming a better person, the steps and choices to becoming even a little bit better at every turn, they say, no, 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 I'm going to do my Chinese culture. That's just a cultural difference. Oh, no, 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 I'm not going to get along with my enemies. I'm going to be mean to them. That, that's an American interpretation that I disagree with. You have to get along with them. I'm going to do my Asian interpretation where we keep enemies. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm not going to tell my kids, oops, I made a mistake. Sorry, I'll make it right. Uh, I'm, I'm dad. I don't make any mistakes. Saying that I have to be humble and nice to my kids, that's an American interpretation of the Bible. Uh, I'm going to do the Asian thing and make my kids hate me and commit suicide and call it my culture and not say that it's not bad. I'm going to go down that road because it's Asia. Oh, I'm not going to be nice to my employees and be a servant leader. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to do that because I'm going to follow the Asian way. The idea that I have to be a servant leader and, and help other people. Oh, that's an Asian or that's an American interpretation. I'm going to do the Asian interpretation. Oh, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to listen to my employees if there's a problem. Because that's a, saying that I have to do that as a leader. That's an American interpretation of the Bible. I'm going to do the Asian thing where I don't listen to anybody and the company fails and I say that it was the best it could ever be and it's going to keep it that way and I'm going to yell and bark at other Christians and, and they have to listen to me or they don't love Jesus. I'm going to follow this other Asian interpretation. There's so much of that. And I saw how outlandish it was. And, and the West does nothing. They don't call them out on it at all. They don't even say, um, maybe that's not right. They don't even go that far in the West talking about what's happening in Asia. And I just, I saw this and I'm like, my goodness. I, you know, yeah, serenity prayer, accept the things I cannot change, right. But I'm not 
going to say anymore. I'm going to, t you know, accept things I can't change when I actually can change them. I'm going to change the things that I can't accept and I'm going to be honest myself with myself about the fact that we can change things. Culture can change. Culture changes by people who, who stand up and annoy everybody. Every awesome person that we quote about our wonderful culture, we do things this way. People hated that guy and he was fringe and they didn't like him talking because he was a disruption. He was against culture. Everyone we quote today to go along with culture, the people we quote in their day were against culture. So, 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 you know, what, what, when, when is it gonna, you know, when's it gonna stop? The people we need to be listening to today are never the people that the culture will accept. The people that the culture's accepted are long dead and the previous culture didn't listen and the culture never learned their lesson. They never get it that the people that we, that are right, that we need to be listening to are the people we don't want to listen to. And I'm, I'm just, I'm not going along with it. I'm not going along with it anymore. Um, so, uh, yes, Asia inspired me with this and I'm not going to back down on it. And I'm long. I love you. I think we're done for the week, at least for these days. More coming this week, other pre-recorded stuff on uh, Apple computers. That'll be interesting to listen to.